Yeah. It's just that I, 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 you can't make everybody happy, but you can make some people happy, you know? I think. I think you can. Well, ultimately, the one that has to be happiest is who? Is me. But, uh, although I'm not. Uh, in some ways, I am. I'm not going to say I'm not happy. That's stupid to say that. Everybody's happy, but, but uh, sometimes I don't feel as happy as I should. <laughs> you know? I, don't know I, I think... I think once in a great while, I'll think that life has been a rip-off for me. But then I think, yeah, but look at those Beach Boys. Look at how they're doing, you know? Look at those boys out there. And they're, they're great, great singers. Mike Love, they're still a Beach Boy, yeah, but I'm not, I don't tour with the Beach Boys. So help me understand, what does this mean? I mean, are you, are you, are you a member? I don't... Yeah, I, I am a member of the Beach Boys, but I don't, I don't travel with the Beach Boys, you know? Okay. I do, I'm doing my own thing now. And the band is still continuing? Yeah. Would you ever go on the road with them again? I was thinking about that, yeah. I, I was giving it some thought. I said, yeah, you know, I was going back and forth. I was thinking, yeah, maybe later on, maybe early next year in April or something, I'll go out in the springtime. I'll go out and I'll, I'll be with the guys out there, you know, on the stage. Just where we should be. You know? That would be the best. That's where you should always be on stage. Summer days. Does that bring back nice memories? Yeah, it brings back pleasant memories to me, to my mind. Yeah, it feels good on my mind. Yeah, it really does. Because that was the start of a, of a difficult time for you, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. 1965? Yeah, that was a tough time for me, uh, But we really got going. We really got, got cutting that one. That was a good album. It was real good. What was difficult about that time? Um, I had taken uh, marijuana and, and um, upper pills, Benzedrine, and uh, it kind of grew my head up a little bit. It's okay, though. I'm all right. Yeah. Did you take any acid? Yeah, I took some. Yeah, I took, well, I think I did. I'm not sure. Is it they get taken advantage of? Right. Right. That's true. That's true. And has that happened with you? Yeah, very much. A lot, yeah. How? Well, just the little ways people treat me. Sometimes people don't treat me too well, you know. Which I know is it's neither my fault nor anybody else's fault. It just happened, you know. I happen to have gone through a lot of hell in my life. But... I think it's, it's okay to re reminisce on that, but not to wallow in it too much, Yeah, I was taught not to wallow in the mire. In other words, if, if I, I can play it all day long, you know, but I choose not to, you know. I mean, you seem really strong now. I have a strong <laughs> chest. I'm strong. Uh, I have a good chest. Okay, I mean, but you also str seem strong emotionally. I'm getting there. I'm starting to heal. My wounds are starting to get healed. I'm starting to get a little more, you know, in command of myself or whatever you want to call it. You know, when you see, when you see that, 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 that forever confusing mess that's hanging over your head, it, it puts you into gear. <laughs> it puts me into gear, you know. Now, what confusing mess? Well, no, just the way life is. The way, the way life is, it puts me, puts me into a spin. You know what I mean? It throws me into a spin. <laughs> But you're one of the, the people that's blessed because you have an outlet. Yeah. I don't know if you've ever looked at it that way. I mean, there are a lot of people that have turmoil in their lives, and there's just, you know, there's chaos, but they have no, they have no outlet. Yeah, right, right. And, I mean, you can turn around and, you know, I mean, you've got God's gift. Well, I was given a gift, but, you know, I, I think I had a lot of love in it. A lot of love. You know, you really are a health nut now. You, uh, you've cleaned up your diet, you're eating all kinds oh, yeah. of fresh, you know, what, what's some of your favorite, do you, have, do you have a favorite restaurant in L.A. that you would go to? You know, lately it's been uh, sushi bars. Really? You know? Yeah, but <laughs> actually, if you want to know the truth, for a treat, there ain't nothing like, there's nothing like Thai food, Thai cuisine. I agree. Oh, I, agree. I mean, everything just absolutely tastes great <laughs> you know, on the whole list. Well, we may not be able to use this, but one in particular, do you have a favorite place you go to? No, I don't, actually. No, when I'm in Honolulu, I go to uh, Kiyos Thai Cuisine, but they're, they're all over the place. They're all over Los Angeles, all over Los Angeles, all over New York, all over Hawaii. I mean, London, everywhere. They got me everywhere. I love Thai, that coconut soup. Yeah, it's great, isn't to it? To die for, I swear greatest? to you. Uh, what other kinds of, now with your new diet and this whole health, yeah. health food? Well, thing. we, you know, I, I mean, like for eight, for eight and a half years now, what's it been? It hasn't been red meat and it hasn't been too much sugar, but uh, other than that, just rice and. Uh, Do you miss eating chocolate? Oh, yeah. I, I, fudge, <laughs> I, I cheat now and then on chocolate. I can't, everybody needs a little chocolate in their mouth now and then, but. Mm. 
But, uh, it, you know, basically, by and large, it's been kind of a disciplined diet. You know, you, uh -huh. you kind of stick to the healthy foods. About a year later, you say, oh, duh, duh. I see what I've been doing here. I ate marshmallows for breakfast every day for 20 years. <laughs> you know, no nutrition in marshmallows. Like a little kid. Get away from that candy and marshmallows and junk. Let's, let's leave the food alone for just a second. Let's, okay. talk, let's talk music. You, oh. you got a new record coming out. Yeah, we do. Uh, our company thinks that we should go back and fix it up a little bit, you know? They said, well, we like it, but, but I think maybe we better fix it up so that we can make it a little more. Like the hard rock songs should rock a little harder. Uh, the, the ballad should, should, should sing a little differently, you know. And, oh, well, okay, we'll do it. So we're going to go back and finish it. Just up. between you and me, man, it ain't the record execs that make the music. It's guys like you that make the music. Yeah. I mean, what can I say? I mean, yeah. th it comes from the artist first, and the businessmen get into it after the artist happens. That's right. Am I right? That's right. Thank you. Um, what, you know, I was over at your office the other day, and you people aren't going to believe this, but Brian Wilson has a rap tune coming out. Is that one going to make the album? Well, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's called uh, Smart Girls, and it starts out, My name is Brian, and I'm a man. I write hit songs with a wave of my hand. <laughs> songs. Yeah. I, I, I'd burn them off every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One away. I hate guys like you. This no, is, you don't. Uh, There's love guys like me. Hit songs left and right, <laughs> left and right. I mean... Um, you know, this might get edited. Yeah. And I mean, because we don't have the final say on the editing, but, and I, I hear you're a little uncomfortable about this. I don't know if I can talk to you about this. Go ahead. Can I? Yeah. Brian Wilson has been deaf since birth in his right ear, okay? Which to me makes him even more of a genius. Because can you imagine not having no hearing in your right ear and putting out all the records, producing the stuff like this guy has? To me, it's amazing. It's amazing. Well, what it is, you know, when you, when you, when you, when you think about it, you kind of like, you don't consciously say every morning when you wake up, oh, gee, I'm deaf in my right ear. I'll never be like other people. I'll never get to hear stereo. <laughs> you know? I'll, I'll never get to hear stereo. What's it like? You know, some say, well, it's like... <laughs> they go... People say, people say, well, you know, Brian, it's like this. You know, you hear this uh, oboe over here, and then you hear it like going like this over to the other side, and the drums will be here, and then the voices will be there and that. And I go, oh, really? You know? And I go, I stick my left ear toward the music and listen to it, and that's all I can hear. Well, you know, it must have been a trip, because here you were on the cutting edge I mean, yeah. of, of rock and roll, pop music. Right. When it was mono, you're cranking out the hits. Yeah. You're screaming. You're right. screaming, right, man. Right, right, And all of a sudden, it goes from this to this. Yeah. Was it frustrating? It, like, drive you nuts, or it was no well, big deal? It was, enough to, it was enough to drive me nuts for a little while. But then, you know, of course, you just, you just get over it. Like, you get over it, and like you say... Hey, that doesn't matter anymore. That's a very small problem compared to what it was yesterday. It was like this, and today it's about like that big a problem. You Good know what job. I mean? Excellent. Um, your daughters. Yeah. You have two daughters. Oh. You have more than two daughters. Oh no, just two daughters. Carney just and Wendy. Two daughters. Yeah. Who are absolutely screaming right now? This this band, Wilson Phillips. They've uh, had a monster first record. Oh. And I just saw one on MTV. What's the M? What's it called? Ambition. Impulsive. Impulsive. Yeah. Excellent song. Excellent video. Yeah. Video. You gotta be proud of them. Well, they sing good. They, well, they're, they're, I'm proud of them, but also the, it rightfully so because they deserve the success they got. Wow, first record in my life or in, in rock and roll? Probably in rock and roll. In rock and roll. Uh, I think I bought Over the Mountain. Yeah? yeah. Johnny and Johnny. I bought that. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, and that, that holds up real well. You listen to that thing still. Yeah, I know. That's so darn well, she had something. Very modern, Johnny had something to do with the Janettes later, too. So Johnny I go and around Johnny the roses. And Joe. I think so, yeah. And that's a, that's a killer right Then I bought Be My Baby, which, which uh, got worn out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's such an elusive kind of a sound. You listen once, you know, and you hear something, and then you listen again and again. It's very elusive. Uh, you've got all the Spectre records. Oh, yeah. yeah. Do you figure you've mastered how he got all his sounds? I mastered, I, I mastered the instrumentation of the sounds. Right. You know I mean, like, I could say, well, that's a bass, and I can identify a guitar there, mm -hmm. and then I hear something in echo here. But uh, to emulate Spectre is to, is to really get in the studio, you know what I mean? Because, I mean, everybody was doing it, so why not, you know? I thought, um, from what I heard of the new record, that a lot of it sounds pretty spectre yeah, places. It, the, the production tracks, is very strong. No, no, th not really spectre. It, um, not, not the album. Um, some of the arranging in the album had mm -hmm. spectre kind of things, but most of it was my kind of thing. You know, I don't, I don't choose to emulate anybody anymore. I, I, di I did mm -hmm. that. I figured I was a messenger in the, in the 60s. You know? Right. I had a message and that was, well, let's see, why don't you play Be My Baby or To Do Run Run, you know? 
and turn people on to something good like that, you know. But I, uh, yeah, I understand Andy Paley, who I followed oh yeah, for you a know while. Him? Yeah, he did some neat records. He worked with you, someone on this. Yeah, record. he lived with Phil Spector for six months. Did he really? Yeah, Spector brought him into his fold, fed him, recorded him, everything, groomed him up, and then he kicked him out. Nothing ever came out, right? No, yeah. nothing came out. <laughs> wow. But but I don't know. They got, he's real, real, uh, real, real with it, you know. Yeah, he's kind of fast witted and sort of. Uh, Plays a lot of instruments. Yeah, so Andy, we're yeah. talking about or Phil. Andy, yeah. yeah. Oh, and <laughs> Phil's kind of fast-witted too. And plays. Yeah. He does and have he, a wit. And Phil may kick you out. <laughs> I personally <laughs> believe that Phil practices all his lines at, at home and then has people oh, over. Rehearses or something. Yeah, rehearses. <laughs> but that's you know that's my opinion. Uh, you uh, that This may be true. Well, historically, we were talking about the fact that uh, in '64, when the Beatles came, almost every American band was no every band period was wiped out except you guys in the Four Seasons. Yeah. Mm. Gene Pitney and Roy you mean, Orbison. You mean, you mean eclipsed? Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. a better word. Yeah, yeah. I think so too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If I'd the Beatles wipe there. people out, then they miss their point, you know. I mean, if, but eclipsed is a better word. Just temporarily eclipsed yeah. is what happened. There's yeah. a, yeah. There's a great thing how the Beach Boys just stayed. The Beach Boys got bigger than ever. Yeah. Yeah. Was that some I get around to those there? giant. Yeah. yeah. Well, Beatles Mike and I had Mike and I went out to dinner about a week after I want to hold your hand hit big and. He is kind of scratching his head, thinking, you know, what the f is going on here? And I said, well, I don't think we should quit, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's just, uh, it was sort of, it was discouraging, I think, the way they hit, of course. Yeah, the it's so big, yeah. Like, uh, yeah. And we were thinking, we were Beach Boy media, you know. <laughs> we'd go to a show, and the girls would scream at us, and we'd think, wait a minute, they're screaming for the Beatles, threw up.